Welcome to Brasilia. The UFC Octagon has touched down in Brazil's capital city for just the second time as a host of native sons and daughters look to put on a show on home soil. There is one of the most dominant fighters on planet Earth, Chris Cyborg. The famed and feared knockout machine dons her home country colors to get the fans going. And there is the very brave and very game elbow queen, Lena Landsberg. The Swedish Muay Thai stylist had no issue jumping into the deep end of the pool in her UFC debut, and she is ready to make a splash. And in the co-main event, former bantamweight king, Henan Barrao, continues on at featherweight when he faces ultimate fighter veteran, Felipe Nover. The FS1 UFC Fight Night weigh-in show starts now. Tomorrow they fight, today they weigh in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. I am Karen Bryant, alongside, get this, 86 fights worth of experience. Well, most of them are his, okay. in all fairness. <laughs> let's be honest <laughs> here. true. Former three-time title challenger, Thank though, you. Mr. Kenny Florian, <laughs> and, of course, the grandmaster of thug jitsu, Eve Edwards. We do have John Gooden on location for us as well. And Ken Flo, here's the thing. When Chris Cyborg fights, you need to stop whatever you're doing, and you have to pay attention. There is no doubt about it. You never know how she's going to go out there and finish the fight. She is aggression personified. Just beautiful violence every time she goes out and competes. And I love this nickname, the, the, elbow, queen. the elbow Queen. I love it. She's excellent in the clinch. Yeah, this fight should be super exciting just because the only fight that Cyborg has lost recently was a Muay Thai fight. So if she can, if Leon Landsberg can keep this as a Muay Thai fight, she has a good chance to win it. But here's the thing, Kenny. You know, Chris is very strong there as well. So yes. does Lena really want to keep it on the feet? Well, I think she wants to keep it on the feet, but she wants to stay in clinch range. She's very good with her elbows, of course, very good with her knees. She just has to be careful to not get taken down because Cyborg really has uh, the advantage on the mat and at range. From the outside, Cyborg's going to be much faster and much more powerful than her. So get in the clinch, Lena. Yeah, but to get in the clinch with Cyborg, you'd get in the clinch with a big, powerful woman. Yes. And Cyborg likes to throw women around. She's, she's very strong, and if she can get tied up with you, she can take you to the mat, land some big shots, and end your night. It's funny because everybody's tried to figure out a way to beat Chris Cyborg, and like you said, she lost in a Muay Thai fight, but half the time she defeats her opponents before they get in there. They're just intimidated. Uh, intimidated, and she just has so much aggression, and it'll, she overwhelms her, her opponents oftentimes. All right, folks. Well, it's going to be a great one, and of course, we're going to be breaking down all the key matchups on tomorrow's UFC Brasilia card. We're going to spend a whole hour doing so. Hope you stay with us. But of course, first, we are going to head down to Brazil. We have got Hodges Lima blessing our ears with the sweet sounds of Portuguese. <laughs> so you want to check out these weigh-ins, folks, and stay tuned for the next hour. Fala, galera de Brasília! Hello, everybody around the world! Vamos começar a cerimônia oficial de pesagem do UFC. Cyborg versus Landsberg. Aqui estão Reed Harris, vice-presidente de desenvolvimento de atletas do UFC. Giovanni Decker, diretor do UFC no Brasil. A nossos, nossos representantes da Comissão Atlética Brasileira de MMA. As nossas Octagon Girls, Luciano Andrade, Jenny e Camila Oliveira. Vamos lá, vamos lá para a pesagem oficial. A primeira luta que você acompanha também no UFC Fight Pass. Divisão dos Leves, Lightweight Division. Vão se enfrentar Gregor Gillespie e Glaico França. O primeiro a caminhar para a balança. The first on the Mr. Gregor the Keith Gillespie. UFC jitters are a real thing, but you wouldn't know that by the conversation I had with Gregor last night. He said to me, and I quote, when we trained together before I ever even had a fight, I told you I would be here one day and I would be making a run for that belt. I meant it then, and I mean it now. And I intend to see that through. The official weight is 156. 70 kilos, 800 grams para Gregor Gillespie. Vem aí o seu adversário, Glaico Megu França! Glyco will not save you 15% or more on car insurance, but he is a purple belt in Luta Libre, which is a Brazilian freestyle art that was essentially an offshoot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. The Tough Brazil 4 winner is keeping busy training and finishing his last semester of college. The official weight is 156. 70 kilos e 800 gramas para Glyco França.
Mensagem da segunda luta, divisão dos meio médios, Welter, Weight Division. Vem aí, Hector Urbina e Vicente Luque. No primeiro na balança, the first and the Mr. Hector El Toro Urbina. Happy belated birthday to Mexico's Hector Urbina, who turned 29 last week. It's been an extended fight camp for the ATT Low Country fighter after the pullout in July. But he has no, said that Vicente Luque is exactly the opponent that he needs, tough and well regarded, so he can steal some of his momentum. Vicente, the silent assassin, Luque! Luque is a tough 21 competitor that represented the Black Zillions versus Team ATT. His mother is a black belt in karate and he counts her and his dad as his heroes. He has a very well-rounded mixed martial arts game with strong kicks and a dangerous top game. Vicente is coming into this fight very confident, coming off from back-to-back -back submission wins. The main event of Fight Pass. Vem aí, Stevie Ray e Alan Patrick. O primeiro na balança de first and scale is Mr. Steve Braveheart. Ray! Scotland's Stevie Ray has just completed his longest fight camp ever. The upshot, it has been his easiest weight cut yet. But he has faced some new challenges. Number one, this is the first time he has fought outside of Europe for the UFC. And secondly, this is the first time he will face a fellow Southpaw. Alan Patrick is back to his winning ways after suffering his first loss. We have yet to see his ground game in the octagon, but being a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and a training partner of Zachary Souza, I'm excited to see him land an early takedown. He stuck the landing on that one and everything. My goodness, welcome back to LA. Catch the next four prelim bouts in FS1 tomorrow at 8 Eastern. We'll be starting with the welterweights, Eric Silva and Luan Chagas. Ken Flo, what can you tell us about the man they call Tarzan? Oh, you mean Tarzan? Yeah, well, they call him Tarzan because he's from a small town in Brazil. He earned that name because his training partner said he probably trained only animals over there. Very impressive record as well. Owns a variety of submission wins over his opponents. And, and training with Tarzan might not be a great idea either. He has six wins by knockout. Eric Silva spent his last training camp in California, but for this one, he returned to Espirito Santo, where he put together a super camp of some of the top coaches and medical professionals in the country. A new one on me, he has been using thermal imaging to assess his metabolic activity. The Tiger Silva. So we have Tar Tarzan taking on the tiger, right? So this should be I like it. a little tiger bit of a tank. Yeah. New I don't know the tiger. The tiger. I mean, Maybe it's the tiger from Dusty Tarzan Ortiz. can control the tiger. No, no, no. O primeiro na balança, Mr. Dusty Ortiz. Coming out of Rufus Sport, Dustin Ortiz uses clean striking to set up his shots. Once he gets in on that position, he's relentless on the takedown and keeps a high pace. I expect him to put a lot of pressure on Formiga tomorrow night and get a, get a big takedown early. The official weight is 124. Came in a pound under. 
I really like what Dustin Ortiz does. The way he moves, he's really crisp with his striking, but he does use it to set up his shots, get inside, and put pressure on the guys. Juicier, or the ant, as they call him in Brazil, is a black belt in both judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I like his style because he's great at taking it back and finishing that rear naked choke. Made huge improvements with his striking as well. The official weight is 126. Got to watch out for those kicks, and he has a nasty uppercut as well. Mensagem da próxima luta, divisão dos galos, Metal Way Division. Vem aí, Mishinori Tanaka e Hani Yaya. The first on the scale is Mr. Mishinori Tanaka. Missionary Tanaka believes that this is an absolute must-win fight in this, his first contest in South America. Of the 35-hour journey across the sea, he believes that it will be unique and fun. One thing's for sure, it'll be a whole lot easier going home if he's victorious this weekend. Yaya has certainly improved his striking over the years, but he's still one of the few Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys in the UFC that you know what he wants to do but can't stop it. While his submission game is definitely on point, I don't think he gets enough credit for his offensive wrestling game. The official weight is 136, 61 kilos and 700 grams for Hani Yaya. Hani Yaha has been one of the most consistent guys at that weight, too. He's, he's been tough, even when he moved down since that weight. He's, he's just been tough all these years. He's been in the UFC. Let's go to the last fight of the preliminary fight. Division of the Leves, lightweight division. Come here, Michel Prazeres and Gilbert Burns. The first in the balance, Michel Trazor Prazeres. Brazil's Michel Tractor Prazeres is a private man, but I discovered him to be very career focused. The other career he has is as a high ranking police officer in the military. However, his focus this weekend is very much on scoring his third consecutive victory inside the Octagon. Wasn't able to focus on making weight though. Certainly Missed wasn't. A couple pounds, yeah. Couldn't get pounds off the tractor. 158 for Reno Burns, Black Zillion, fighting out of Florida, by way of Brazil. He says Prezeris is strong early in the fight, but fades, and he's predicting a late first round or a second round finish. All of Burns' wins in the UFC, all of his finish, and he finishes anyway, have come by way of armbar. So with the build of his opponent, yeah. I would like to see something different out of him tonight, <laughs> not tomorrow night. The official weight is 156. So Durinho, already a winner, guys, getting extra 20% since yes. he'll be getting Prezeris' uh, some of his purse. Durinho, of course, the first time I met him, he was uh, Vitor Belfort's jiu-jitsu coach. And uh, he's somebody that even way back when, if you, you know, I met him years ago, they said, this guy is one to watch for sure. All right, folks, welcome back to the desk here in L.A. We're ready to weigh in the fighters on the six-fight main card. You can see all of that on FS1 Saturday night. First up, featherweight Godofredo Pepe. He will be facing Mike De La Torre. And, Kempla, what can you tell us about De La Torre, who just had a birthday yesterday and turned 31? Well, this is the other El Cucuy, or boogeyman, as they say in Spanish, with Tony Ferguson being the other one. So don't get it twisted. Bellatore is a very mentally tough individual who doesn't get rattled in fights. He has very heavy hips, which makes him difficult to take down up against the cage. The official weight is 146, 66 kilos and 200 grams for Mike De La Torre. Mike trades at the MMA lab in Glendale, Arizona, and says he wouldn't have it any other way. Godofredo Pepe! Godofredo Pepe. <laughs> I love the way this guy fights. He's very aggressive with his jiu-jitsu, but he feels he has the better ground in this matchup. He says his opponent is a good boxer with great takedown defense. That being said, 
I see Goto Fredo Pepe having some problems getting the takedown, but I don't think it's going to be too much for him. He's definitely going to throw some flying attacks, submission attacks at him. Flying arm bars, flying triangles, flying knee bars. You got any for me, Kenny? <laughs> I think you got all the flying stuff. No, he went with the white hair this time. We've seen red in the past, blue, I believe we've seen from him. Yep. Likes to put on a show. Gets fired up the weigh-ins, too. Let's see what he's got. There we go. Reed Harris stepping in. Dilatory didn't seem phased, guys. No, Boogeyman didn't didn't seem didn't phased flinch. at all. You can't scare the Boogeyman. Can't, I mean, yeah. by definition. The principal division of Matthews, middleweight division, Eric Spicely contra Thiago Santos. The first on the scale, primeiro na balança, Mr. Eric Zebrinha Spicely. The Massachusetts native who now calls Rhode Island his home is known for his submission game and is a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu under Tim Burrell, the former pro skateboarder and tough 23 competitor, has switched things up for this fight. Camp now training at the renowned TriStar Camp in Montreal under Faraz Sahabi. The official weight is 185. You know, they actually might be cheering for him. I couldn't tell because he was on Cloud exactly. on the Ultimate Fighter. So I think he's got some fans. Yeah. Marreta Santos! Thiago Santos is still reeling from that defeat to Gegard Musasi. However, he was able to refocus his mind by starting his own martial arts facility in Rio that will help the kids. All they need to do is prove they're in school and they can train for free. The official weight is 186, 84. Of course, that fight was at UFC 200. So he's getting into, back into action relatively quickly. Very cool. Love that he's giving back to the kids yeah. in Rio. Fantastic. When he took that shirt off, I thought that hammer on his chest it's was hammer a fly time. swatter. It's hammer time. <laughs> That is new. That is definitely new. Slaughter. 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 The Irish Dragon, Paul Felder. I love watching Paul Felder fight. He's a pressure fighter who gets more aggressive when he gets hit. He says it's the crazy redhead in him wanting to get payback. So I'm looking forward to him getting hit tomorrow night. He's trained a lot with Cowboy Cerrone in the past, but he said he stayed on the East Coast for this and trained with Mark Henry and Ricardo Almeida. Almeida. Official weight is 155. Those two guys are 70 kilos and 500 grams. Just a little bit, right? One of the biggest 55ers in the world, too. He's huge. Francisco Trinaldo Massarandu. Francisco Trinaldo fights out of Brasilia, but trains at Evolu Cal in Curitiba under coach Andre Dida. I noted a couple of unorthodox training methods for this one, including sparring blindfolded. Well, I'm sure he's going to be coming in very much with his eyes wide open as he looks for his seventh consecutive win. Masaranduba is really hot these days. Six fight win streak. That's tough, too. You know, in this division, that's saying something. That's Absolutely. definitely tough. Felda wants to get himself a free fight win streak and take that banana away from the Duba. That's going to be a great fight. Yep. Right now, so the first on the scale, the first on the scale, Mr. Antonio Fico Silva. Bigfoot will be fighting in his birthplace tomorrow night and will definitely be booed by the loud Brazilian fans. Silva's hands and feet are huge. And you never want to get hit by a pro fighter that needs to cut down to 265 pounds. I think Bigfoot is pretty sneaky athletic as well. And the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt's top game and ground and pound is very dangerous. Don't want to be underneath that beast right there. And I like the beard. I like, I like beard the beard too. He busted that on a couple of fights ago. Yeah. Yeah. Makes him look a little more distinct. I think so. Yeah. You know what I love? Even though he's had some hard Ladies times in his fights lately, he's got a fan still adore him. And his opponent, Mr. Roy B. Country Nelson. Speaking of someone the fans adore, that's Roy Nelson. And it's because he has a fan friendly style. But this is the turning point for Roy Nelson. He's lost five of his last 11, and he needs to get back into the win column after the fight with Derek Lewis. He has a great chin, though. 
117 quilos para Roy Nelson. He has a great chin and KO power, though, and that could spell a bad night for Bigfoot. So I'm looking forward to seeing this fight tomorrow night. Legendary chin. Still gets hit a little too often, though, guys. Yeah. Even with a great chin, you might want to move it every now and then. Not take too much damage. Yeah. yeah. Penas, featherweight division. Philip Nova e Renan Barão. O primeiro na balança de força nos KOs, Mr. Philip, the Filipino assassin, Nova. Even though Nova has had his black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu since 2008, he's really stepped up his volume of training in wrestling and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu over the years, training with Edge Wrestling, Henzo Gracie, Daniel Gracie, and Ricardo Almeida. And besides having a nursing degree, Felipe is also a cardiac invasive specialist that assists doctors Visual placing life-saving devices like stents in patients' hearts. That's kind of great. <laughs> yeah, it's impressive. He can beat you up and then save your life. Save your life. I like that. The Bellhawk champion of the war, Renan Bebelho Barão. Former featherweight champ, I'm sorry, bantamweight champion, Hennem Barão. He was riding high on a 32 fight unbeaten streak. But after losing his title and a rematch with Dillashaw, you know, he's trying to regain that dominant style. The official style. weight is 146. 66 it's so much better at this weight, Kenny. Absolutely. Much happier, too. Yes. Should be a solid co-main event, but with that, all that is left, of course, is our headliner. Let's take a closer look at both fighters in our catchweight main event, Chris Cyborg and Lena Landsberg. I really think the UFC fans will enjoy seeing Cyborg getting cut and uh, bleed. She says she wants to take blood from me. I don't scare blood, man. I'm a fighter. Chris Cyborg versus Lena Landsberg is an excellent fight. Cyborg is an absolute destroyer. Cyborg. Cyborg victorious. Leslie Smith is an incredibly tough fighter, and Chris Cyborg ran through her in her UFC debut. First fight in Curitiba, Brazil, had to be God's plan because it's perfect. I was in my city. I'm fighting with my heart, and I really don't know I have so angry heart, but in the fight, you know, I use a lot of explosion. She was I really wanted this fight because it's one of the biggest fights that you can get. Lena Landsberg will be one of the toughest opponents of Chris Cyborg's career. She is a world champion Muay Thai fighter who has ridiculous striking. She has outstanding elbows, she has great timing, and she's got a wealth of experience in stand-up fights. I'm definitely a fighter more than an athlete, and I do love when somebody gets hurt. I want to have the power to do what I want with other people. Oh, the big elbow to the face there from Lena Landsberg. If you should do everything she says she wants to do, may you be perfect, because it'd be an amazing fight. She got an all-nation on her shoulders. She's going to have everything to lose, and I'm going to have everything to win. Welcome to UFC, you know, I think you enjoy your time. I want the victor, of course, I want to KO her, and I will do my best for do this. So, so this, ladies and gentlemen, Lena Elbon Queen Lansberg. Lena Landsberg is a fighter, and she's here to fight. She's a former Swedish, Nordic, European, and World Muay Thai champion. And so she's ready to put that Muay Thai skills to the test against Cyborg. When we asked her a favorite technique, she said it was elbows. I think blood is very nice, and that's what elbows do. <laughs> that's kind of scary. I like her already. We're sitting here with the elbow king. Yes. <laughs> I wish. Too bad you can't pack extra elbows to fight sideways. Right. Miss Chris Seba. That right there might be the most dominant UFC fighter in the game right now. Chris actually lost her pro MMA debut in 2005, but since then has been undefeated and only going the distance two times. Weight is 144 kilos para Chris Cibor.
Denis Lena. Você vai fazer a sua estreia no maior evento de MMA do mundo contra uma das lutadoras mais poderosas do planeta. Como é que você se preparou para essa batalha? You're going to have your debut in the biggest organization in the world against one of the toughest and most durable and strongest adversaries you can have. What do you feel like? This is going to be fun. Vai ser divertido. Show. Lena Lusberg. Have a good luck, miss. Chris. Parabéns, antes de mais nada. Primeiro, primeira batalha foi vencida. Mais uma vez lutando no Brasil, mais uma vez no UFC. A responsabilidade vai aumentando. Como é que você se preparou? Até em função de todos os problemas que você teve aí, toda a dificuldade para o corte de peso, como é que você se preparou para essa luta? Congratulations being here again, another fight in the UFC back here in Brazil. You had a lot of difficulties cutting weight. How do you feel right now? Estou muito feliz. Boa noite a todos. Eu estou com a bandeira no meu rosto para dizer que nós somos guerreiros, independente da... Dependente da perca de peso, amanhã vai ser show, amanhã estou agradecido aqui, agradecer a Deus pela oportunidade, dizer que amanhã é show. E treinei como todas as outras lutas. I have the flag on my face because I'm a warrior, regardless what happens tomorrow night, it's going to be a great fight. I train like I did for every other fight, so it's going to be great. Senhoras e senhores, Chris Seaborg. Boa sorte, Chris. Boa sorte, Lina Lansberg. Amanhã a gente se fala. See you tomorrow. All right, thank you so much, Hodges. Welcome back to the West Coast. I love... October 1st, the UFC returns to Portland with a Rock'em Sock'em main event between knockout artists John Lineker and John Dodson. And a Striker's Delight fight card featuring Will Brooks, Cowboy Oliveira, Sergio Pettis, Nate Marquardt, and many more. UFC Fight Night, live at Moda Center October 1st. Fighting. Nobody's taking this away from me. It felt good knocking out Michael Bisbank. And I'm going to do it again. Absolutely crestful. Like, you weren't happy to, to have gone to the semifinal. Mm. Boy, tell you just, just, just even you saying some of these words here right now, you know, you know, I, I don't think you, you know what it's doing because you're, you're conjuring up things right now. Let's just put it like this, point blank. I know what I'm capable of doing, and I should have turned that man into a pile of kindling wood because of what I know now. I wish I would have known then because we wouldn't be having this conversation. I would not have these internal struggles that I'm having. A lot of people go, well, say, ooh, this or ooh, that. You don't have a clue. You're not in my world. You don't know nothing about me.
two of the biggest personalities in MMA. I make the predictions and I make them wrong. Now host the best podcast in the sport. I'm the first guest. <laughs> We're not going to mention the eight fighters that said no. UFC Unfiltered with Jim Norton and Matt Serra brings you the latest in fight news and analysis, behind the scenes stories, pop culture debates, celebrity guests, and more. We have The Rock calling in. How are you, man? I just want to see a great fight. <laughs> Hear new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and UFC.com. UFC Unfiltered, powered by digital media.